What's going on? I'm FPL and Zagi. Welcome back to another video. Today, it's the Game Week preview video for Game Week 11. In these videos, I go through your biggest questions of the Game Week. If you want to get involved in these videos, if you want your question answered, keep an eye out midweek. I'll post on YouTube asking you to send in any questions you have for the Game Week preview video. We go through your questions. We talk about captaincy. We talk about who's likely to keep a clean sheet, all the good stuff ahead of the Game Week. So make sure you get involved in that if you'd like your question answered. Hit that like button as always. Let's try and hit 50 likes on this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. And let's take a look at the biggest question that I'm facing at the moment this game week. And that is what to do with benching my defenders. Newcastle and Arsenal are versing each other this week. I've got an Arsenal defender. I've got an Arsenal goalkeeper. And I've got Kieran Trippier. And many managers out there have at least a Newcastle defender, if not Newcastle and an Arsenal defender. And Rasmit Pokharel, I'm sure I've butchered that. He's asked who he should bench out of his Newcastle defender or his Arsenal defender. So I thought I'd take a look at some of the stats here on screen. We can see on the left-hand side, we've got the team's expected goals scored for the season. Newcastle actually have the second best expected goals scored this season. So their attack is statistically the second best in the league. Arsenal are a little bit further down. Somewhat of a surprise, we would probably expect Arsenal to be in the top three like they are for their XGC, so their expected goals conceded. It's just eight across the first 10 game weeks. They have the second best defense in the league. Newcastle just behind there with the third best defense. It goes to show how good Newcastle are at the moment from an underlying stats perspective. They've got great attacking and great defensive stats. Arsenal, very, very good defensive stats and their attacking stats are decent but probably not as good as we would expect them to be. But again, looking at the stats, both teams have a strong defense, but Newcastle's attack is statistically a little bit better than Arsenal. And of course, they are playing at home as well. So out of the two, I don't think that I would want to start any Arsenal defenders. Yes, they have a slightly better attack, but they're playing away from home against the second best attack in the league in Newcastle. I don't think I would want to play any of my Arsenal defenders. I don't know if I'd want to play any of my Newcastle defenders either. Yes, they have the third best defense in the league, but again, Arsenal's attack is not too bad. If it was a straight shootout between a Newcastle defender or an Arsenal defender, I would rather play my Newcastle defender, but it's not as simple as that. So when we have a look at the individual player stats, and this is sorted by expected goal involvement across the season, it's Kieran Trippier as the only player from either side to appear in this table. So what this tells us is that we shouldn't really expect an attacking return from any defender from Arsenal or really from any defender from Newcastle except for Kieran Trippier. And if we go back and take a look at the attacking stats of both sides, they're fairly decent there as well. So looking at the team stats, I'd probably expect both teams to score a goal. So I don't know if I'd want to play either either a Newcastle or an Arsenal defender. But if you've got a Kieran Trippier, he is the one player who could get you an attacking return. So I don't mind playing Kieran Trippier. Uh, as I said, if you've got a decision to make between playing a Newcastle defender or an Arsenal defender, I would rather play my Newcastle defender, especially if that defender is Kieran Trippier, because I think it'll be a low scoring game, something like a 1-1, but there's every chance that Kieran Trippier could get an attacking return. So that's what I would do there. I'm playing Kieran Trippier, but I'm going to bench Zinchenko. I am playing David Raya though, ahead of Ariola, but only because I think that West Ham's fixture is not great either. If I did have an alternative option in goals, I would probably bench David Raya, but I'm playing Kieran Trippier at the moment and benching Zinchenko. Looking at some of the best budget defenders, so Jay War 10 has asked about whether he should by Mark Gahey or Simicast this week. I thought I'd take it as an opportunity to talk about a couple of other budget defenders that we could look at as well. I think these are probably the four best defenders to go for. Now, looking at the expected points across game weeks 11 to 16, it's Simicast who comes out on top. But you might not need to play this defender every single week. 
Those are the expected points if they were to play every week between now and game week 16. But if you pick one of these players, they might be a rotation option. So looking at the total expected points probably isn't the best indicator of who you should go for. Rather, have a look at the fixtures, have a look at the game weeks that you would need to play one of these defenders and make a decision then based on who you should get for your team. So for example, Jamal Lascelles is the cheapest here on screen, but if you need a defender to play this week, I don't think that I would be picking Jamal Lascelles. He's got Arsenal at home, Bournemouth away in game week 12 is good, but then he's got Chelsea at home in game week 13, and I believe it's Manchester United at home in game week 14. So if you're picking a defender to save some budget, you don't need to play them in the short term. You might play them in game week 12, but you're not relying on them for minutes. I think Jamal Lascelles is a great pick. Dawson from Wolves has some good fixtures. The problem is the good fixtures for Wolves are away from home. And clean sheets away from home are more difficult than clean sheets at home. Again, look at the rotation. If you need a defender this week, Sheffield United away is good. And then Fulham away in game week 13 as well is a good fixture to play your defender in. I've got my eye on Simicast, but the problem with Simicast is that I probably need a defender in game week 13. I need someone to play for me because in 13... I've got Liverpool playing Manchester City. I think we've got Tottenham playing Aston Villa as well. So a lot of my defenders are playing difficult fixtures in game week 13. So if I was to bring Simicast into my team this week, then I would get the Luton away fixture, which is great. But then I would probably need to play him in game week 12 or game week 13. But he's got two difficult fixtures against Brentford and Manchester City. From game week 14, though, Liverpool's fixtures get really good. So if you're looking at a defender for 14, 15, 16, then you could go for Simicast, bench him in 12 and 13. But take a look at your defense for game week 13. If you've got a Pedro Porro or a Udogi, They'll be playing Aston Villa. If you've got a Matty Cash, they'll be playing Spurs. So there are some difficult fixtures for our defenders in game week 13. And someone like Mark Gahey, he's not as explosive potentially as Simicast, but the fixtures in the short term are a lot better. Crystal Palace play Burnley away this week. Everton at home in game week 12. Everton are on the rise. It's not a simple fixture for Crystal Palace that match, but then they've got Luton away in game week 13. So if you're looking for a defender who you need to play in the short term, I think that you could consider Mark Gahey over Simicast, especially if you need that defender to play in game week 13. I'm on the fence though. I think Simicast at 4.6 playing for Liverpool on some set pieces is almost too good to turn down. But again, it does give me a little bit of a headache in game week 13. Out of the defenders on screen, it's Mark Gahey and Simicast for me. Unless you need to free up budget and you can bench that defender, then you could go for Lascelles. But again, look at the fixtures, especially game week 13. Do you need someone in 13? If you do, go for Mark Gahey. If you don't need someone for 13, I think Simicast is the defender for you. Taking a look at the best Neto replacement. So Boise... 7551. He's been a great supporter of the channel. Thank you, Boise, for the support that you've shown the channel down the years. He's asked a question about Huang as a one-week punt. And again, I thought we'd talk about Neto replacements and some budget midfielders here. I think to answer your question, Boise, I think that Huang is a fantastic one-week punt. And we'll talk about the expected points for game week 11 a little bit later on in the video. Huang is right up there and he's only 5.5 million. The question that I do have about Huang is now that Pedro Neto is injured. He has been their chief creator. What is that going to do to the attacking stats of Wolves? I think they will see a decrease in the chance creation. And I think Huang will suffer as a result because Pedro Neto is not there. I still think he'll perform well because the fixtures are there for Wolves. Sheffield United away. Tottenham at home in 12 is not great, but then they've got Fulham away in game week 13. It's worth reminding ourselves though that Wolves have scored in every game this season except for the opening round against Manchester United. And again, they should have had a penalty in that game. So arguably Wolves could have and should have scored in every single game this season. Huang's conversion is something like 30%, which even Erling Haaland hasn't converted at that rate over an extended period of time. I think that there's a chance that Huang's returns will start to dry up just a little bit. But again, you keep coming back to the fixtures and Sheffield United is the best fixture for any team in the league this season. So it is worth the punt, in my opinion. Gordon, 5.7. He played up front against Manchester United in the Carabao Cup with 
with Callum Wilson getting the rest. And between game weeks 11 and 12, there is the Champions League. So we might see Gordon start up front again against Bournemouth away in game week 12. If you need a player to bring in this week, I don't know if I would go for Gordon. I think that I'd pick Huang over Gordon. And you could revisit Gordon in game week 12. Palmer from Chelsea is great value, but the fixtures in the short term are an absolute nightmare. I don't think that I would be buying Palmer this week, even though he is potentially set and forget. Five million on penalties playing for Chelsea. That's all great, but the fixtures in the short term, I don't really like. What I would probably do if I was looking for a budget midfielder is I'd pick someone like Huang or Adingra. Adingra for Brighton's fixtures are fantastic in the short term. Everton away, Sheffield United at home, and then Nottingham Forest away. And then I would move from Adingra or Huang to Palmer around game week 14 or 15 when Chelsea's fixtures start to get better. That's probably the way that I would go. But Boise, to answer your question, is playing a great option this week against Sheffield United? He certainly is. Let's talk about the best City asset. So again, Rasmit Poke Harrell 851 has asked, who are the best City assets besides Erling Haaland, of course? I think the first question we need to ask ourselves is, do we need any City assets besides Erling Haaland? I don't think we do. Bournemouth at home this week is fantastic, and if you want a one-week punt, going for someone like a Foden or an Alvarez or a defender, I don't mind that. But then they've got Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham, and Aston Villa in the four game weeks after. Luton away in game week 16 is great, and they've got a couple of nice fixtures before the blank, and then the eventual double that we're predicting will fall in game week 20. But to answer the question, who are the best City assets besides Haaland? I don't know if we need any City assets besides Haaland, but if you are in the market for a City asset besides Haaland, I think the answer is still Alvarez as the second best option. This table here from Fantasy Football Scout is sorted by the expected goal involvement across the season. We've got Alvarez and Foden in second and third. Alvarez is still quite cheap at just 7.2 million. If you want a one-week punt against Bournemouth at home, I don't mind Alvarez. Foden's a good option. He's appeared 10 times this season. He started nine games, and in the last four matches, he's played 90 minutes. So Foden's minutes are really great at the moment. Can we guarantee that will continue? No, we cannot. And I think we've seen so many times in the past where Foden's minutes have looked good. We've all jumped on him and then he gets benched in the next game. That's the curse. That's the problem with picking a Manchester City asset besides Haaland is you just can't guarantee their minutes. But if you find out, if we find out before the deadline that Foden starts, I think he's definitely worth a shout. Defensively, Ruben Diaz, Kyle Walker are a couple of names that I like. John Stones, he's quite low on this list for expecting goal involvement but he's only appeared in three matches in the Premier League so far this season. So he hasn't had the appearances and the minutes that the other defenders have had on screen. But when he does play, he is an attacking threat, particularly from set pieces. So if you want a defender... I really like Ruben Diaz, Kyle Walker, or John Stones, but the issue with picking any player is the minutes moving forward, and you might find yourself holding a Manchester City player through some less than ideal fixtures against the likes of Chelsea and Liverpool and Tottenham, when I think that there are players with much better fixtures, and we can start looking at Manchester City players besides Haaland from around game week 16. So to answer the question, who are the best City assets besides Haaland? I think it's Alvarez and Foden, and then the likes of Walker. Walker, Diaz, and Stones, but I wouldn't be going near any other Manchester City player besides Haaland and maybe Alvarez at the moment. Let's take a look at the clean sheet odds this week. Manchester City right up in front, but the odds for the other teams are actually quite low. Looking at this table, Liverpool second best with 45%, and then it drops to Aston Villa at 34 I'm looking at my defense this week. I've got Aston Villa playing away against Nottingham Forest. I've got Newcastle playing Arsenal. And I've got my Pedro Porro playing against Chelsea. I don't see too many clean sheets this week for any defense, except for probably Manchester City or even Liverpool away to Luton. So I think if you're looking at your defense this week, I don't know if I'd be spending transfers in defense. I think it's quite low upside this week. I don't see too many clean sheets. And I think it's a good week to have defenders who have other routes to points. Guys like Trippier, Cash, and even Pedro Porro, who are good for attacking returns. Because I don't see too many clean sheets in game week 11. I've already spoken about who to start out of Arsenal or Newcastle defenders. So if you've missed that, Make sure you go back earlier in the video where I talk about who to start out of your Arsenal and Newcastle defenders. I'm going to be starting for what it's worth, Poro Cash 
and Trippier. I don't see too many clean sheets there, but hopefully we'll get some attacking returns. Looking at the expected points, and this comes into captaincy. I had a question about captaincy. I think if you've got Haaland, he's the most obvious captain this week. If you don't have Haaland, it's Salah. And then apart from there, I think we start dropping down to the likes of Mbumo, but Alvarez and Darwin could be alternative options. But really, it's a week where it's Mo Salah versus Erling Haaland, both of them up there for expected points this week. Alvarez and Darwin looking quite good with good fixtures against Bournemouth and Luton. I'm expecting Darwin to start and get around 75 minutes. Gakpo's fit again, so we will see some minutes for Gakpo. I don't think Darwin will play 90, and for that reason, I'm not comfortable captaining Darwin. It's too big of a minutes risk, and there you can see all the way down the bottom, we've got Huang there who makes the list for expected points this week. Simicast at 4.7. So if you're looking for a cheap defender, Simicast is projected to do quite well this week with 4.7 expected points. He's the best defender on screen under 5 million. So if you want to make a transfer in defense, I think Simicast is he's probably the defender to go for. That's it for today's video. I hope that was helpful for you and your team. Let me know if you've got any questions I haven't answered in the comment section below. Hit that like button as well. We're trying to hit 50 likes for the video. Subscribe to the channel. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.